Well, it started out a rainy day here in New York City, but it's just a gray day now. The rain has stopped. It did? Yeah. It was not raining when I came in this morning. It was pouring. Not you, when you I came, came in. You came in before I did. Right. Uh, the thing is, too, uh, we have a moon roof on the studio, yeah. and if we had left that open, we would have been in trouble. Right. Good news, last night, you closed it before you left. We would have right. lost the security deposit. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Hour three of Fox and Friends, live from Studio F. Let's uh, dial in right now. Fox News contributor and the founder and editor in chief of Life Set, our friend Laura Ingram. Laura, good morning. Hey, to Laura. You. Am I disappearing into the background with the black? I mean, <laughs> no. I didn't know. I was, I'm in Tucker's studio. I didn't realize that I'm like going to be in a different uh, studio. It you does look look great. Fantastic. Yeah, it looks like you're in a nightclub, but it's perfectly well, okay. <laughs> Seriously, another margarita, please. Thanks. Bring it over. Uh -huh. There you go. Hey, right. Laura, I know you're an attorney. What do you think of the Supreme Court taking up this case and then allowing for the ban, the 90-day ban, for people that are entering from those six Muslim-majority countries? Well, I, I, it's not a complete victory for the Trump administration. It is a, there, there's a good news in it, no doubt. Court will hear the entire case in the uh, fall term. Uh, beginning in October of next year. Uh, the, the concurrence by uh, Justice Thomas uh, was really instructive. What he said, and it was joined by uh, the new Justice uh, Gorsuch, what he said is the idea that the Supreme Court would make up this, this new exception right. uh, for individuals overseas who have, quote, bona fide uh, connections to either people or entities in the United States can can basically bypass the president's uh, travel pause. Now, uh, that's just ridiculous. Uh, the Supreme Court tried to uh, impart its own legislative authority, which it does not have under our Constitution, uh, onto this uh, Trump travel pause. It, because, that, because that wasn't Laura, what the Trump administration uh, conceived right, of. Right. Uh, so they just made that whole thing up, and now that's going to be another hurdle mm -hmm. for judges to clear when they have to consider uh, exigent circumstances on the part of sure. refugees or would-be travelers to the United States from those affected Meaning countries. So that can... is not a win for the president on that specific uh, outline right. just rule, you know, a group of exceptions. Because they just added that. That's the same thing John Roberts, the Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice, yeah. added to Obamacare. He just right. gets out a pen and starts writing extra stuff. Well, that's, that's exactly why we need justices on the Supreme Court who understand their role is circumscribed by our framers. They do not have the right to, to conceive of new legislative demands and put them on states, localities, or the federal government. Right. That's not how it works. If they want to be legislature, legislators, they should resign their positions and they should go run for office. But they're justices right. on the Supreme Court. I found that to be very disturbing. It, because somebody has a relative in the United States does not override the president's supreme executive authority under our Constitution to uh, deter any national security uh, concerns and address them as he sees fit. So that subcategory they, they, they devised uh, of, in the majority, well, that's just wrong. So uh, Justice Thomas, my right. old justice, and, and uh, Gorsuch are totally right on that. So that was, as good news is that Justice Gor Gorsuch seems to be just phenomenal so far. Uh, there, someone just said he is Scalia. Uh, meanwhile, uh, and meanwhile, the White House, even though you could break it down and say there's some areas of, the, of concern, they look at it as a, a, a momentum is going their direction. If you see the VA bill that was signed over the weekend, the fact that the Senate is taking up health care, the fact that he seems to be uh, aggressively going after things in Syria and lo warning them ahead of time, uh, it seems like we have a foreign policy very uh, compliant with his with his image. But something else happened when he would decide to back out of the Paris Agreement. A lot of cities and states and a lot of mayors said we're going to stick with the Paris deal. Mike Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York City, has taken to another level. He is launching a 17 million dollar uh, contest to encourage liberal cities to sidestep what the Trump administration did, and that's pull back from those uh, from those constraints. What's your take on that? Imagine having that much money where you can just sponsor contests for whatever issue you care about. Right. 
Oh, this is what he did uh, on gun control. He threw a lot of money into various activist efforts. He's done this for years. This isn't surprising at all. If Michael Bloomberg wants to throw his money, you know, out the window for these types of efforts, he can do that. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with that. The, what we need, however, is from the administration a continued national tutorial on the proper role of the federal government vis-a-vis -vis these international institutions and international agreements that aren't treaties but could in the future impose really strict uh, rules and regulations on American businesses that are not applicable to the Chinese or the Indians or the Indonesians. And so I, I just hope, given the, given the massive activist push against what President uh, Trump is trying to do here, I hope that we continue to see a consistent and really powerful messaging on issues such as climate change. We care about the environment and conservation efforts. I certainly do. We also have to balance that against the interests of American sovereignty, liberty, freedom, and our, our willingness to trade away our sovereignty to international institutions that have been very hostile to American rights and freedom in the past. So that's what they have to keep doing. M Michael Bloomberg, I I'm not sure what that's going to achieve, but look, if it makes them feel better, I guess uh, let them blow the money. Is that what the American people want? I know that's what Michael Bloomberg want, but what is... I guess America don't, I guess don't uh, compete in the contest. Well, you uh, dangle some money. You dangle money out to uh, local and state governments, and yeah. they'll be willing to uh, bite at anything. Look what happened with uh, Common Core. We had a lot of states sure. who were willing to go for that uh, Microsoft money that Bill, Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation uh, put out there. Uh, yeah. You have to do what's best for the people of your state, right. regardless of whether you're going to get a hundred grand or a million dollars from someone yeah, like Bloomberg. Well, what can 17 million buy you anyway? It's I don't think it buys you much. Yeah, yeah. Not okay. anymore. Laura, let's talk a little bit about this. You know that uh, when you click around on the, the other channels, there's a lot of talk about Russia. Russia, Russia, over the last month or so. I haven't noticed. Yeah, well, oh, that's really? because we're busy on this uh. channel doing all sorts of news. Well, uh, Donald Trump uh, took note of the fact that CNN got a, a story about Russian collusion with somebody in his kitchen cabinet really wrong. He tweeted this morning, wow, CNN had to retract big story on Russia with three employees forced to resign. What about all the other phony stories they do? Fake news. And he's talking about this story that uh, linked Anthony uh, Scaramucci to the Russians. They had to retract it. They only had one source. It turned out not to be accurate. What do you make of all that? Remember all the journalists and who continuously berate the president for raising the issue of fake news? I mean, they do it all the time. How dare he speak out against what you know, these vaunted journalists are doing? Someone like an Eric Lichtblau used to write for the New York Times, and yeah. Lichtblau, who's now forced to resign. Look, he was a phenomenal journalist. You can't question him. Or Thomas <laughs> Frank uh, is another investigative journalist at CNN. Look at his track record. Look at what turns out. They were behind a story that was fraudulent and defamatory. I, I don't know why Scaramucci's deciding not to uh, to file a lawsuit against CNN. Maybe he just doesn't want to deal with the hassle of, of hiring lawyers. But it, it is a scandal that CNN allowed this to be published without the rigorous Why'd journalistic standards, now which we believe. Standards. Now yeah. they have standards. From here right. on in, we're going to have standards. All right. So, but I would, I would remind everybody that on Jeopardy a few years ago, Lichtblau, which is one of the reporters who resigned, obviously they were fired, uh, Lichtblau admitted that he has been dogging Daryl Issa for years and had been exposed for uh, bias by people like Newsbusters and so forth for years. And so th th this, is, this is not surprising, but Donald Trump has been right about a lot of the fake news. And this is just one story. Right. Other stories have already been retracted and they have, they have been written and quote investigated by people who we are under, understanding to be serious journalists. What, what about the kids who just started at CNN? How are that? How is their track record holding up? So I, I think Donald Trump's right, right to be uh, very frustrated with all of this. I just wonder if they're going to hold on to the Russia story as long as they did the plane yeah. story. Uh, Nobody it, cares though. Right. All right, Laura Ingram, great to see you. Thank you great so much to see for your you guys. perspective. All right, Take meanwhile, care. 10 minutes after the top of the hour, uh, Jillian, you have uh, preparing the news while we were talking. Yes, I was very busy back there preparing the news, and we do want to start right now with a Fox News alert. The White House vowing Syria will pay a heavy price if it carries out another chemical attack. The Trump administration warning the Assad regime could